Well, good afternoon, everybody, and it's great to be here. And uh, as you know, uh, the brain drain hasn't completely happened as I'm still in agriculture. And so, <laughs> Jerry, where are you? Just wanted you to know that. Um, <laughs> but it is a pleasure to be here, and, and I am going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the Food Processing Development Centre and the incubator and what uh, the Ministry of Agriculture uh, is doing uh, in, in food innovation and, and how we're doing it. So pardon the infomercial, but uh, uh, it, it is one of the unique uh, facilities uh, in Canada and if not globally in terms of scale and, uh, and just uh, the number of companies that we graduate and spin off. So, so anyways, bear with me and uh, let's get started. So um, our mandate really is to increase the capacity and competitiveness of the agri-food industry and, and we do that through applied research, product development, um, uh, commercialization and the incubation of, of new, new businesses. And the sweet spot of the, of the Food Processing Development Center and the incubator is, is really we try and fill the gap between suppliers, processors, technology and the marketplace and commercial production. And so w the sweet spot that we, we fill is in product development, market testing, uh, commercialization, consumer testing or analysis. So we really try and accelerate that process and speed that up. So how do we do that? And we do it through um, some of our facilities. So this is the uh, Food Processing Development Center lo lo located in Leduc, Alberta. And uh, we started off there at 35,000 square feet in 1984. So we've been around a long time. And uh, we have, um, you know, a, a applied research and product development laboratories, uh, pilot processing plants, and, and an analytical lab. Uh, we also have um, a sensory lab and consumer products testing center, and a culinary lab um, and a food prep area. So, that, is, that was essentially um, the, uh, the food process development center. I'm just going to go through the facilities and then I'm going to talk about uh, some of the staff and, and programs that we have. We also have the food processing development center, uh, the food science and technology center in Brooks. And I, uh, we've got some staff here, uh, Mung is down there. This is where we do our non-food applications. It's down in Brooks, Alberta. Uh, we do pet food applications, but we also do some analytical work with some of the crop industries down there. Um, so that's... Um, that's another facility that we have in Brooks, Alberta. Um, the AgriValue Processing Business Incubator. Um, this is something that, uh, after hearing Jerry's talk, I wanted to, to talk about in terms of the Alberta government doing something different. Um, in 1984, as I mentioned, we built the uh, Food Processing Development Center and we did product and process development. And what we noticed after many years of working with companies, we would start developing their products and then um, we would find that you know, the marketplace was saying, can you get, uh, pr provide us some, uh, some test uh, samples? And so we would say, yeah, we can do that. And then they said, well, can you ship and start selling to us? And so that's what we created our intern processing program where we would allow companies to actually manufacture in a government-owned facility and, and sell to the marketplace. But what we would find is after three to five years that companies, we would get them to a certain stage, but then they would fade away. And what we were hearing is that the food industry is a tough business. I've heard that before from somebody. And uh, the regulatory issues are really um, significant, like understanding the regulations, understanding federal registration regulations. Um, retail market is really tough. Um, capital costs are really high in terms of building and building a building to federal standards. And then you've got to get equipment. And then you have to make payroll. And then you have to wait for retailers to pay you. And so those are the things that actually caused um, a lot of our companies that we were working with to fade away and die. And so they never really did get out of that valley of death. So in 2007, we completed the, the building of the uh, AgriValue Processing Business Incubator. And from a, from a uh, province perspective, this really is uh, a game changer uh, that, for us in terms of the government and, and, and what we've seen how it's impacted. So what the incubator is, it's not, we, whenever I say I work, we built an incubator, people, oh, they think of chickens, right, you know? But it really is we're incubating and growing or accelerating food processing companies. And so that's what the incubator does. 
and it is a 75,000 square foot federally registered uh, facility. And what we do is we lease out suites to um, companies uh, that they can uh, run for about four to five years. All they have to do is move in their equipment and their people and they can have access to a federally registered facility. <clears throat> and what that, and with that comes also, uh, you know, there's a lot of shared services with this facility. So we lease, the largest suite is, is 5,000 square feet. But if you were to build your own, uh, that's just straight processing space. If you were to actually lease uh, a 5,000 square foot processing space with all of the, the shared areas like cold and, and freezer space, dry storage, welfare areas, you'd be looking at about a 25 to 30,000 square foot facility. So, so really you're, you're leasing a fully functioning operating facility. And what this does is it lowers the risk. Um, and that's what we're finding when uh, companies move in is that it really does lower the risk and it does speed up their ability to move, uh, to get towards where they can build their own, um, own facility. And so uh, some companies that uh, um, we've worked with uh, that, that are, have done this and successfully graduated are, are companies like Siren Foods, Aliyah's, uh, a company called Etuve Foods, uh, Ready Foods. Um, we've had um, uh, Maple Leaf was in, um, and we're going to see the graduation of CPRO this year. So why I'm telling you this is that um, this facility is really having an impact that we've seen in terms of of stimulating and growing that investment. So it's, uh, it's something that uh, we're seeing about a three to one return on investment in terms of, of the money that we're putting in, that we've put in, but also the direct capital investment that industry has, has put in. So um, that, enough about the incubator. Okay, so the people at the FPDC. So one of the things about uh, our facility is we try and have uh, people in the facility that are food scientists um, uh, and engineers and maintenance people, but they have to have industry experience. Uh, so it's, it's really strong, it's really critical that you have to have strong academic credentials, but you also have to have, well, five minutes, all right. Uh, you also have to have strong industry experience. So I better speed up. Um, some of the projects that we've been involved in are, um, it's interesting. We tend to work with processing companies but we also work with our commodity uh, organizations as well, because the goal of, is, to add, is to increase the value added uh, production in the province. So some of the really innovative projects, products that we're working with is um, with barley fiber and, uh, and yellow peas. And the idea is to basically increase utilization of, uh, of our Alberta grown crops and to look at ways of incorporating those uh, crops into everyday uh, foodstuffs. And so, so we are working with our, our uh, friends with the barley industry and our pulse industry and uh, developing some, some really unique products. Another area in terms of advancement innovation is, um, is through our sensory science uh, program. Uh, we do have a database of about uh, 2,500 people that we can access for sensory evaluation. And uh, one of the areas that we've, we focused on this in the last couple of years is the desire to have healthier food products such as low fat and low salt. And often, you know, fat and salt is flavor, right? I mean, those are things that, uh, that really make good food. And as you can tell, I'm not reducing my salt and fat intake. Um, but, but when you do reduce it, what impact does that have on flavor and what impact? So, you know, companies have to really evaluate whenever they're uh, removing or reducing a functional ingredient you have to understand what the implications are, not only from a functional perspective, but also from a marketing perspective. And so we've done quite a bit of work in terms of evaluating what are the impact of, of, those, of the reduction in, of those ingredients, but also what about uh, other ingredients to replace some of those uh, ingredients and what impact do they have on the product quality and the market? And so sensory is, is certainly an area that plays a strong role in that. Um, high pressure processing. This is an area that we've invested in over the last few years. Um, high pressure processing, for you that don't know, is a technology that a applies pressure to a finished product, so after the package. And this really came to light with Maple Leaf and Listeria, um, where uh, the product was contaminated after it was cooked in the slicing process and it was put in a package. HPP really does, uh, it applies pressure to the package after, it's, to after the package and that's what destroys the, the, the bacteria in the package. And so 
it applies 87,000 pounds per square inch. Think about that. That's a lot of, a lot of pressure. Um, and, uh, but it's a, it's a non-thermal treatment, so it doesn't impact the product quality. And so we've uh, been working with uh, marinated meat products um, in terms of extending shelf life. And uh, we've also got novel, uh, novel status for smoothies. Because you're using HPP, you have to work with Health Canada to make sure it's approved. And uh, so right now I think we have sliced meats, applesauce, and now smoothies. So this is a technology that, that is available at the centre. It is the only uh, publicly accessible HPP unit in Canada, I think, last time I checked. So it is something that is uh, worth checking out. So um, really I'm just going to move along because I have time. So really the, the Food Processing Development Centre is designed to, to support the industry, to support uh, the growth and development of the industry and to add, um, add value to agriculture commodities. And if you are a processor uh, and want to develop new food products and accelerate your, your entry into the marketplace, um, you know, please talk to us. Uh, I've got also some staff in a booth here, so we are wandering about and we'd love to talk to you and see if we can or, or can't help you, but uh, be very interested. I'd also like to take this time to thank AI Bio and AFPA for, for their support in putting this together and, for, uh, and also the industry organizations that have worked with us and supported us and, and the processors as well. So thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of the conference.